connect with them mentally, yet they couldn't escape the melanin in their skin that defined them physically as better than the African, but not as good as the imperialist white man, the British, the one who decided the order of power, subjugated the community for generations, and pitted them against one another like tribes in the indigenous Americas. Oppressive sentiment grew out of conscious control, like liquid cement spewing out, locking in a structure of hate. He supported his family while the crocodiles destroyed life sentences. My grandfather, Bakuji, was born of simple means. Worked on machines and oil refineries. He didn't crave the finer things, finding schemes and reaching for stars in the sky. Aspirations out of touch to reality. He worked every day as hard as he could until exile brought him and his family into its colonial past as a refugee in the hood of East London, Essex way. He had to start again, only now he was an immigrant, up against all odds and racist men. Not that this was new, but these racist men were different. Instead of bayonets, they carried credit card briefcases, taking every chance they could to make a case against their existence. And he was raising them. So you know he had to get it together before he reached the end. In a crowd of white, he would teach them to blend while simultaneously expecting the family to uphold tradition. Unlimited. His supply of love came with no condition. Dapper before dapper was dapper, Bapuji just classy like a gentleman. Every day, like he was ready to face the world again, and with grace and honor, he took things day by day, always held high was his head. He kept his family well fed in both brain and brawn, so one day his love would spread into their new families and he would be reborn again. When people ask me what my ethnicity is, I think from now on I'm just going to say I'm diasporic. <laughs> like my language. Difficult to label. What are you? Is a question that takes me at least three minutes to answer. <laughs> Rehearsed as if it were my responsibility to remind others of imperialism, of real human stories and not language course universities. The word dialect is just a replacement of diversity, a subjugation of authenticity. Dialect allows white folks to assume all customs and traditions are basically the same. They refuse, but I choose to call it what it is, a language, a story. My family doesn't just speak a dialect of Gujarati. My mother speaks seven languages, her father several more. Diaspora created a dissonance in tradition that deviated communities from their derived paths. Cast, casting down destinies never intended for language to stray so far from home. So far and for so long. So that if it ever returned, its tongue would appear so foreign it wouldn't belong to the mouth that birthed it. Wouldn't know who or where to call home. Wouldn't have a sense of direction that made sense to the rest of the world, but always made sense to diaspora. Gujarati spoken in my family consists of a touch of Urdu tastes of Pakistani spicing, Muslim sheep that weren't as black as the indigenous Kenyans, although they did not marry, Swahili lips would touch the vocal cords and stress the accent, creating a beautiful timbre of culture trying to be preserved, but finding value in fluidity. Ironically, becoming a now Islamophobic community where the whites of British make every shade of brown matter, but not the same trying to stay grounded in roots that have never known soil because a task unwarranted and undervalued. Distraction delivers a language's death. Demolition of desires to remain a part of the story. To keep it alive. But it remains a story. Not a dialect. A language. Begging to be remembered. Wishing to be preserved and never forgotten. Thank mm -hmm. you.